This video is about adding an offline controller and how easy it is to destroy a lens um, if you're not careful and don't follow the maintenance. I did see a video a couple weeks back on another channel, uh, Edmund's Workshop I think it was, and he put one of these controllers on his uh, Polar and I decided I was going to try one so I ordered through his link and it was um, CloudRay is the company and they're in China and it's just uh, shipped in from China. Had to wait till after Chinese New Year to be shipped out but um, it's here now and I'm going to do a video about it and let's see if this thing does work and uh, does what they say. So I did uh, find a manual online. It's a little different part number but it's, it's close enough to get me going I think to uh, set it up and stuff. And as always, I got to take stuff apart to look inside because I'm thinking about how to in integrate this into the uh, Polar in the future. But looks like it's just going to have to stay in its own box. Maybe I can cut it down some. So that's what it looks like. And let's go start um, getting ready to put it in. So first thing you have to do is get rid of the honeycomb in the tray that's in there. Give you a little bit of room to work. And um, next thing is take that cover off. Now there's a screw in the front and a screw in the back. I'm going to start with the back one here. And then there's two little metal clips welded on the side of the uh, side panel. That you have to push out to get the cover to release. And that is not an easy job. Um, it takes a little bit of pressure and you have to you know, kind of look down there while you're doing it to get it out. And I actually tapped it with a hammer a little bit, but I did get it loose. And then a couple cables in the back there. There's one for the uh, cover limit switch. And there's also one for the uh, light strip that's on there. I'm just going to set it on the side now until I really make sure this is going to work. Um, because, you know, I saw that uh, I saw that he had installed one and it, it looked like it worked. Um... But the cloud ray company really knew nothing about, you know, if it would work with this. So there's a cover over the controller. Three screws take that off. That's just to protect it. And there it is. And what do you know? It is the, um, the standard controller. A little bit different suffix on it there. But um, there you can see it's just a standard laser controller. And it does have the port right back there to plug this controller in. So that'll make it easy. And a couple wires back there. First I tried getting the plug in with the other wires in there and just couldn't get it. So finally I took the two screws out and tipped the controller up on its side there. And that made it really easy to plug in. And... Uh, and I just figured, well, I'm going to just try it, make sure it looks like it's going to work before I finish, you know, modifying this and drilling holes and stuff. And sure enough, turned the machine on, it, it booted right up. Um, and basically, I just tried the, uh, the X and Y movements on it just to make sure. And you can see those little arrows up there go X, Y, and then there's also Z. So everything, you can see there, everything's uh, working. I can jog it. So, you know, it appears to be working properly. So I'm going to screw the controller back in there. And I ran the wire down along the other wires that are going out the back for the network and the USB. Figured I'll run it out the back there. Just kind of keep them all together. Uh, so I got out a, just a standard um, 2075 hole saw it took to drill a hole in the back there. A couple minutes later, I had a hole, and then I had a grommet from a, this is an old Harbor Freight grommet kit that I bought 20 years ago. That every once in a while you need one, and it's handy to have when you you know you have them. And then I saw there the universe there the USB plug on the controller for um, loading file time. So I figured, okay, I had a male female USB cable laying around, and I'm gonna plug this in too while I'm back here, and I've got room to get it through the hole. And that should allow me to just put the files on the USB drive and load them from there. And I'll show you in a second. 
So I just had to, you know, snake everything through the grommet. And there's where the USB plugged in there. And I did take that wire and run it back along the other wires also and tie wrapped it. But eventually I'm going to put a plug in the front there and just go straight out with a, a little plug of this whole thing works out. So now it's time to just throw that cover back on put the screws in. Sure, you know, it's really not that bad to, um, to work on this machine. It looks like they did use a lot of standard parts. So there it is, got the grommet in, and I actually put a second grommet inside of there to fill the hole tightly, and it worked out really nice. Looks nice and clean, and wires are tied back to the other ones. And it's time to just throw this cover back in place. Um, two plugs back there, one for the limit switch, or the cover close switch, and the other one for the light strip. And it's a little bit tough to get that light strip one back through the holes and stuff when you're putting it in there, but it goes so now everything's together I, I turned it on and the first thing I noticed was it was all in Chinese so luckily I had printed out the manual and I was able to go in there and um, switch it over to English and then I started loading some files I had saved in the controller and there you can see I can load a file and I can frame and I can actually cut I'll show you in a second but they're all backwards and it turned out I had the origin in the uh, left corner and not the right. Once I fixed that everything flipped over and it was great. Now I took a piece of black acrylic that I had laying around and um, just decided I going to bend it to mount this controller temporarily so I used that bender that I built heat it up. It takes about a minute 15 seconds and then I wanted it a little bit over 45 just to for the right angle so I could see it. So that was a you know a simple bracket. Um, right now this is what I'm going to use but eventually I'll be 3D printing something to control enclosure for it. And then I use double sided tape to put that on the back of the controller. And there you can see I put a little tiny rib in it too so it wasn't flexible. And I have this USB cable in I have to somehow mount so that it's, I can put a drive in there so I just figured I'll glue it right onto the back of that uh, little panel I made I'm just going to take some super glue so I can do this quick get it over with I just super glued all over the housing smeared it all over there and then um, took a can of the accelerator spray it And that makes it a quick job. Ten seconds later, after you get it lined up and in place, uh, you're done. Then I have a place to plug my USB drive into to load files. And lastly, I decided I was going to put this on the front panel with Velcro for now. Because like I said, I'm going to make a 3D print and enclosure for it eventually. And I had some of this... Uh, self-adhesive velcro mail you know the both ends of it the hook and the loops and just decided I'll stick it on there for now so I can always pull it off if I have to you know get in there again so I put it right about there for now and it's really perfect die level for me and everything so worked out good and um, actually it doesn't really look too bad I mean if you decide to put one on there it doesn't really matter what you do with it but um you know, that's where I wound up, and I just tied everything back for now. And hope someday I'm going to drill a hole in that glass and come straight up through it. But I just, I didn't have the confidence to do it right now. I'm afraid it might shatter. And once I know everything looks like it's going to work, I'll just put those two screws back in to hold that panel down. Now, while I was in here, uh, I know, I wonder, if you watch that last video, you saw that it was taking more and more power to, to make cuts in the acrylic, and figured it's a dirty lens, and um, I'm going to try to clean that now, I figure. And first thing you do, you pull that fitting out in the air assist tube off, and then I had to crank down the, dry, the um, movement there, and you can push the lens right out. Now, first I started with just some IPA alcohol, like they say, and 
the little swabs and you actually have to go up in the lens tube and I did find out this is a specialized lens it's not a standard lens this whole thing is like staked together but if you look in there uh, let's see if we can get this in there you can see there's a big black spot um, actually I'll try to get it better there it is it looks like from doing all that acrylic somehow it, the fumes got up in there and they fused themselves right into the the lens material and it will not come off i tried the um alcohol first and uh, let's see then i went back and i cleaned the mirrors i figure while i'm in here i'll clean the mirrors and i did contact um ohm tech and i can't believe how fast their support got back to me and they're helping me out with this so um i was pretty amazed but i did clean it with xylene i tried ipa i tried vinegar and i tried acetone and none of them would remove the burn mark the only thing that would take it off you can see in the center i scraped a little bit of it off but i figured uh seeing how it's off center a little bit i'm gonna try turning this lens 180 degrees and maybe i can get a little more life out of it just to finish up this video here but you can see it's um you know it's definitely I should have cleaned it after like every hour doing acrylic I think just to be safe that acrylic fumes they get up in there and um, apparently the laser fuses into the lens so you know it's kind of my fault it's a learning experience when you've got a new machine and you know you've never been through stuff like this but that's one thing I'm going to recommend that you um, check and clean these lenses often and when you get your machine I'm probably going to recommend that you get a spare lens. Um, just to have it in case something like this happens, um, because it's real frustrating to be, you know, to be stuck trying to finish a job with, without a lens. And here's the other lens that comes with it for the long focal. At first I thought I might be able to get that on there, but I can't. And that one there actually uses a standard size lens in a standard retainer, so that won't be easy to change if you have to. But, um... As you can see, it sticks down way too far. You have to use that when you, you know, have the bottom panel out. So I'm just gonna fire it up here, and I just want to make sure it still works. Um, see what happens. And I did do a couple, couple test shots, and I did turn it a couple times till I got a, um, the best possible results. So here I am, just uh, moving the. You can see I can move the X and Y now, and uh, put them where I want. And I can move the Z down to the focus. And this is where that little plastic focus gauge is easy to use. Um, I can just sit here with the controller, hold that gauge here, and set the focus really quick. Now, I was going to run a focus ramp test, but with the, until I get the new lens, I'm not going to do that. I'll do that in another video. But for now, I'm just going to um, show you. I'm just going to fire the laser and poke a hole in here just to, to make sure it's, um, it looks better. And after rotating into the best spot, you can see there's a little hole I just uh, blew through. You can see the other big one by my left finger that's really big. And you see this one, once I turn the lens, I found a spot that still works on it. So, you know, it doesn't look too bad. So now I've got two files I saved in the controller. And I'm going to load one. This is uh, one that my granddaughter came up with. And I'm going to print this out just using the um, this offline controller. And then I have another one here. I just load it up. And you can load it and hit frame. And you can't really move the origin. I'm going to have to look into playing with the controller a little more. But you can see you can frame it and get, get your... Um, material in the right spot. You can't use the camera with the controller. Uh, and here I'm going to load this up and framing it. And this is all there's no PC hook to it now. It's all running off this uh, controller in that file that I had loaded in the controller. Everything looks good and then I'm just going to hit start. And you'll see it's a uh, going to take off on its own. Now I realized I didn't turn the fan on so I stopped it quick and turned the fan on and then I started up again and um, the fan in the back of the machine does not run 
with this offline controller, but the big fan up on the ceiling that takes care of everything. There you can see that little red line going across. That's actually the laser working in where it's going. This controller really um, does does work nice. It's really gonna you know up the game for this machine making a standalone unit. And there you see that big blower up there is handling it all. And the only other fan is the cooling for the um, the radiator. That gets pretty loud at times, but you know that one you ha you need. So you got your time on there. It's going to take and everything else. And you know it looks like it's a you know it's definitely going to be a winner. And um, I'm not sure if everybody wants this. This machine is easy enough to run on its own using light burn. But you know if you got something you're going to be running over and over again, you really don't need the computer. And there you can see it's starting to cut, and that cut is really wide, and that's because the lens, like, probably have scratches and stuff in it, but, you know, everything basically works, and, you know, it's all my problem, my cause of problems or anything that doesn't. So, a couple of minutes later, um, pull it out, and it's done. It did, it actually did a beautiful job, and, uh, no problems, uh, controller in the job, uh, the settings were all right, everything worked, so I'm really happy. And this may not be for everybody, but if you, you know, you want a little bit more control over the machine and the focusing and, you know, seeing if there's an error that stops the machine, um, this should help in the long run. But, you know, basically light burn in the computer work fine too, just you're in the dark a little bit more and you always need the computer running. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.